In this how-to, I'll show you a couple of great finishing techniques and some options to really trick up your display stands. Let's begin with the simplest possible finish. And you know the easiest way is, well, it's a little dull, a little amateur. But you simply paint it with whatever latex house paint you have on hand and while it dries, by golly, it's Miller time. I think maybe we've come a little too far to let it go with simple paint. The second option is called faux finish. Faux is French for false. Faux finish just fascinates me. It's easy to get some amazing effects and it covers a multitude of sins or defects. It's not that we have any defects, but what we do have is masking tape on cardboard, all painted with house paint. I have rather a lot to say about faux finish and other how-tos, but for the time being, let's keep it simple. We need some differently colored paint. Now, hobby stores have little bottles of all manner of paint, but I'm going to keep it simple with some black, some white, and the same basic blue I used to paint my example. Okay, now watch how easy it is to do faux finish. This little box we made earlier, and this is the blue paint I painted it with originally. Dob a little of it out, a little more than that. Okay, this is basic latex paint, the cheap stuff in fact. Then we're going to add a little bit of black. Just put it there on one side, very good. And a little bit of white on the other side, okay. Now there's lots of things you can use to put the finish on. You can wad up newspaper, you can wad up grocery sacks. I'm using a fairly thick piece of plastic that uh, some books came in, it's sort of a mailing envelope like thing. Anyway, get a little black, a little white, a little blue, and start dabbing at the side of the thing. I don't think I have quite enough white. Now I do. Okay, a little more white. Yes, indeed. Another edge. What could be easier? A little more blue now. Uh-huh. Oh, a little black. Just a little black. Okay. That's two. Now some white. Yeah, all right. Okay. And then the third side. And a little more white and blue uh, for the fourth side. There we go. So far, so good. By the way, the black and the white is so easy, and if you do it right, it looks a little bit like granite. Blue granite, or purple granite, or pink granite, but it uh, looks like granite. And there's the top, right? A little black, a little white. Notice how I'm turning my wrist every time I dab it. And that's it. All done. The next thing I want to show you is papering. This technique is wide open. What you want to do is find some paper that you like. Any paper. Leftover bits of wallpaper from your home, for example. Or some nice wrapping paper. For some collections, maybe even newspapers. Or to really do it up, you make your own faux finish paper. But more on this later. In addition to the paper, you will need wallpaper adhesive, a crummy old brush, utility knife, scissors, and maybe a roll of paper towels. Here's the paper I'm using. This is actually scrapbook paper. Yep, my little box is going to fit. And uh, now I wad up the paper. That's right, just wad it up good and tight. The reason for this is there's going to be wrinkles anyway. So you might as well make a virtue of necessity and start out with some wrinkles. Unfold it carefully. You don't want to tear it. And I believe, yes, I did tear it. But uh, it's no big deal. We'll find out why in just a second. Get it kind of flat. Grab your wallpaper glue and from the center start spreading it right out to the very edge. This is also where we put down some paper that won't get messy. You'll do about three corners of it easily enough. Sadly, by the time you get to the fourth corner, there is no way to do it without putting your finger in the schmutz. Cannot be helped. Okay, when you got a nice layer of goo all over, you put your box, squish it right in the middle. Squish it down a bit, there you go. Take a knife, cut to each corner out. One, two corners, notice the backhand cut. Pretty cool. And the fourth cut. Okay, now you fold it up. I'm going to start with the torn part. And there's just enough to work. I'm going to stop talking now and let you listen to the nice music. You can see now why it is the torn part didn't matter. I covered it all up. Okay, then I take some scissors and snip into each corner. I'm using scissors now instead of the knife because the paper has by now soaked up a little bit of the water from the glue and has gotten really tender. It's going to tend to tear if I use the knife. I'm also cutting through two or three layers. 
You fold each flap into the inside of your box, and then you take and smooth the whole thing right on out. Rub the bottom edge against your work surface and you're done. Now for the optionals I promised. First one is to put some felt on the bottom. If you don't have some nice fuzzy scraps of fabric knocking around the house, you can find these little peel and stick dots in the fussy hardware aisle of your local home improvement store. Next, if your collectible is on the heavy side and your stand is on the large side, you might want to reinforce it. It's easily done. Measure the height of the inside of your display stand. This dimension is not the same as the height you started out with. Cut a long strip of cardboard this high. Cut across the corrugation so they end up being vertical. Fold it into three or four sections and glue it into your stand. Don't be bashful with the glue here. It ain't going to show and it's one of those rare occasions where more is better than less. It's stronger and, frankly, it's easier. Do you want to give your display stand the illusion of, well, kind of floating? This is easily done. You simply make another box slightly smaller and slightly higher than the original one. Paint it black, or whatever color you like, and put it underneath your original. That's about it. Be sure to check back here for more how-to, particularly more on faux finish. Let me know if you have any questions or suggestions. And thanks for watching.